Hi everyone. This is the first part of series on drugs that act on vasopressin receptors. But before we dive into the pharmacological aspects, let's have a brief look into the physiology of antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Structurally, antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin is a polypeptide with 9 amino acids. Vasopressin or the antidiuretic hormone is the mediator for regulation of water conservation in the body. The antidiuretic hormone is synthesized in the magnocellular neurons in the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus of hypothalamus. It is secreted from the hypothalamus into the posterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary secretes the hormone when there is an adequate stimulus. So what are the stimuli that can cause a release of antidiuretic hormone? When the plasma osmolality is more than 280, an increase in oral salt load, hypotension or hypovolemia, conditions associated with pain, nausea and hypoxia can also release antidiuretic hormone. So you must be wondering how does the body sense the change in the plasma osmolality or the changes in the blood volume or blood pressure or even the oral salt load. For this there are certain specialized receptors that are present in the body. Osmosensitive receptors present in the central nervous system that is the subphonasal organ, the organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis, the median preoptic nucleus sense the change in the plasma osmolality. The threshold for release of antidiuretic hormone is 280 milliosmolals per kg. The baroreceptors present in the carotid sinus, iota, left atrium, left ventricle and the pulmonary vein sense the changes in the blood pressure or the blood volume. And the hepatic portal osmoreceptors sense the change in the oral salt load once the antidiuretic hormone is released into the circulation. It acts on certain targets. Primarily it acts on the renal target and all the other targets are grouped as non-renal targets. The primary role of antidiuretic hormone in the kidneys is water conservation. Vasopressin increases water permeability of the collecting duct and increases water reabsorption. The urine can be concentrated as high as 1200 milliosmolals per kg. Some of the important non-renal targets include the cardiovascular system, the central nervous system, the uterus and the liver. So how does vasopressin act on these target organs? For that you have the vasopressin receptors. Vasopressin receptors are mainly V1 receptors which are subclassified as V1A and V1B and then you have V2 receptors. The V1 receptors are GQ type of G protein coupled receptors which act via IP3 DAG pathway and the V2 receptors are again G protein coupled receptors which are GS type of G protein coupled receptors which acts by increasing the adenyl cyclase. Out of these receptors the most abundant one is V1A type of the receptors. Initially the V1B receptors were classified as V3 type of receptors but now they are classified under V1 receptors itself. Let's see how are these receptors distributed. Firstly the V1A receptors. V1A receptors are abundantly present in the cardiovascular system. They are mainly responsible there to cause vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation. Then in the hepatocytes of the liver where it causes glycogenolysis. The other important site of V1A receptor is the uterus where it causes uterine contraction. The V1B receptors present in the pituitary glands where it causes release of the adrenocorticotrophic hormone and the central nervous system where it has a role to play as a neurotransmitter and some pathophysiological role 
to play in depression and as an antipyretic factor. Lastly, the V2 receptors. The most important target of the V2 receptors is the renal system, where it acts in the collecting duct to increase the water permeability. It's also present in the vascular endothelium, where it causes vasodilatation, and also it has a role to play in the coagulation cascade. It causes release of factor 8 and the von Willebrand factor. Till now we have seen how vasopressin is synthesized and released, what are the various stimuli for its release, the various target organs and also the vasopressin receptors. Now let's have a closer look into the action of vasopressin in the kidney. This is a schematic representation of the renal nephron and this is the collecting duct which is the primary target of vasopressin. Please note that in the absence of vasopressin or the antidiuretic hormone, the collecting duct is relatively impermeable to water. In the presence of antidiuretic hormone, certain water carrying vesicles called as equaporins are inserted into the epical membranes of the collecting duct. And this would greatly enhance water permeability of collecting duct and the water moves alongside its concentration gradient. Apart from this, vasopressin also inserts certain urea transporters called as vasopressin regulated urea transporter 1 in the inner medullary collecting duct and also activates the epithelial sodium channels in the collecting duct. And both these actions would greatly enhance the medullary osmolality and this in turn increases water absorption of the collecting duct. The other site of action of vasopressin is the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Here vasopressin acts by activating the sodium 2 chloride potassium sympoter and this would also increase the medullary hyperosmolality or increase the corticomedullary osmotic gradient. Please note the action on the collecting duct and the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle was via the V2 receptors. Vasopressin also acts via V1A receptors and causes contraction of the mesangial cells in the glomerulus, contraction of vascular smooth muscles of vasa recti and also contraction of the efferent arteriole. And all these would decrease the blood flow to the medulla and further increase the medullary osmolality. To summarize the action of vasopressin in the kidney, it acts via V1A receptor and V2 receptor to increase the medullary osmolality and also enhances water permeability of the collecting duct, thereby helping in water conservation. Disease affecting the vasopressin system. It can be either an increased ADH secretion called as the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion or a decrease in ADH secretion called as the diabetes insipidus. Firstly about the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. It is characterized by increased secretion of antidiuretic hormone which results in impaired excretion of water and this would cause hyponatremia and hypoosmolality. The main causes of SIADH include CNS trauma, tumor or infection, surgery or drugs. The drugs that can cause SIADH include psychotropic medicines like SSRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, haloperidol, chlorpropamide which is an anti-diabetic drug, vinca alkaloids and cyclophosphamide which are anti-cancer drugs and clonidin. The management of SIADH include water restriction, hypotonic saline, loop diuretics, vasopressin antagonist or vaptans and demiclocycline. Diabetes insipidus can be central where the secretion of antidiuretic hormone is low or nephrogenic where the ADH levels are normal but there is a decreased response to antidiuretic hormone. Diabetes insipidus is characterized by impaired renal water conservation because of which large amounts of dilute urine is lost. The cause of central diabetes insipidus include head injury, surgery, tumors 
aneurysms or it can be even familial the causes of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus include hypercalcemia or hypokalemia renal failure or lithium therapy drugs that can cause diabetes insipidus are alcohol lithium glucocorticoids and demiclocycline management of diabetes insipidus include vasopressin agonists thiazides carbamazepine or chlorpropamide and even nsaids are believed to have some role in management of diabetes insipidus